this morning. Josh Friedberg, once again, thanks for your time. Let's start with the easy one. It seems that all state and territory counterparts are on board with removing the GST from tampons. Is today just a formality and when will we see that GST removed? Well, we're very hopeful to get agreement from the state and territory treasurers at today's meeting in Melbourne uh, to removing uh, the GST on those feminine hygiene products. It was the uh, coalition government that put this issue in the, on the agenda. It's my colleagues have been championing it, like Sarah Henderson and others, uh, for some time. And now uh, we look like we're on the verge of getting a breakthrough. Uh, in terms of when it would come off, uh, what the treasurers and I have been discussing is from the 1st of January next year. OK, so the 1st of January, mark it in your diaries. Now, you are meeting with your state and territory counterparts today, as I mentioned. The West seems to be pretty happy with you, but not so much the eastern states. There's modelling by the Victorian government today that shows that in this new GST um, world, the, the new GST uh, peace deal that you've put uh, forward, some of the other states could be shortchanged by $3 billion. Well, the distribution of the GST had become a national problem and the Morrison government is now providing a national solution. We're taking the leadership that the Australian people expect us to do. Uh, and uh, what we have seen uh, in the past is that in Western Australia, uh, following their mining boom, uh, Western Australians only got 30 cents in the dollar. And you've got a ridiculous situation, Laura, where the Northern Territory... Uh, with one-tenth of the population of Western Australia, or Tasmania with one-fifth of the population of Western Australia, was getting more GST revenue so other uh, than Western will Australia be worse itself. Off? No. Uh, all states and territories will be better off as a result of this. We've used the data produced by the Productivity Commission. We're putting in an additional $9 billion uh, to support the states and territories. There will be an additional $1 billion in perpetuity uh, going to the states and territories mm. from the GST. And we are putting in a floor uh, at $0.75 cents so that no state uh, falls below that proportion of their GST share. So what's These with are this Victorian government modelling then? Is it wrong? Well, the Victorian government uh, is grandstanding here. They know that they will be better off uh, by hundreds of millions of dollars as a result of this GST reform. And let me make it very clear. When it comes to the distribution of the GST, the Commonwealth can take action because that is our responsibility. When it comes to changing the rate and the base, you need the states and the territories uh, for that agreement. This is about the distribution of the GST. This follows extensive work by the Productivity Commission. This is using data put forward by the states and this will be a long-term solution to what was a problem that threatened the viability and the integrity of our GST system. Well, Labor's not quite on board yet, Josh Frydenberg. There's been a letter sent, I believe, between the Prime Minister's office and the opposition leader's office, and so far what Labor's seen, uh, they're not that satisfied with. They don't see, look at this legislation yet and see that there are guarantees that no state would be worse off. Will you put a provision in legislation to guarantee that? We're not running dual systems. Uh, we're not running the old system and the new system at the same time. We're running a new system of distribution based on the work of the Productivity Commission, which will see every state and territory better off. And I've made it very clear that the additional $9 billion we're putting in is not coming at the expense of other grants and payments right. to so, the states. So now, are when you Bill confident Short... that you'll be able to satisfy those concerns from Labor to get them on board? Well, this is a real test for Bill Shorten because just a few weeks ago, Laura, he was standing in Western Australia with the Premier, a Labor Premier of Western Australia, saying that he was on a unity ticket uh, with the Coalition, that he would follow Scott Morrison's lead, that he will support the legislation of this reform. Mm. Now, if he tries to walk both sides of the street, as we've seen him on other issues, saying one thing in Victoria and another thing in Western Australia, then that goes to the heart of his credibility. Uh, and we've seen already that a Labor Premier in Western Australia, Mark McGowan, has said he's been surprised by the toing and froing uh, that's coming from Bill Shorten. So Labor uh, needs to act 
to support us mm. in delivering a better deal for every state and territory. It really is a test of Bill Shorten's credibility. He can't walk both sides of the street. Okay. We've been decisive, we've shown leadership, and Scott Morrison deserves credit for that. Why have you been so critical of Labor's announcement yesterday of a, a listing to a Labor wants to listen to those people that haven't been able to air those, their grievances in the Royal Commission? What's wrong with that? Well, firstly, we've had 9,000 plus submissions, and the Commissioner uh, has said they've all been read, and he's asked for further submissions. And if you had read through the 1,000-page report, or anyone had read through the 1,000-page report from the Commissioner, they'd be left in no doubt that this is a very rigorous, professional, considered, uh, forensic process that he's going through. Now, Bill Shorten uh, first thought that he knew better than the Royal Commissioner, saying there must be an extension of time when the Royal Commissioner has yet to ask for it. Now he thinks he's the Royal Commissioner by conducting his own hearings and running a parallel process around the country. I mean, you cannot be serious. He is threatening the independence, the authority of our Royal Commission. Now, that is the process that they had called for and that we had implemented. And now we have a very considered interim report mm. which is scathing in its assessment of the culture compliance in the banking sector. Yep. And we will be taking the necessary action to restore the public's confidence and trust in our financial system well, well, so that they get the products and services they deserve. Well, Treasurer, just finally, I know you are open to extending the Royal Commission beyond the February 1 deadline, but you haven't been requested, that hasn't been requested mm -hmm. as yet by the Commissioner. But are you concerned that this could run too long and therefore damage the, damaging, damage the economy, would you consider putting a cap on the timeline? Yes, you're happy to extend it, but should it run past a year and a half, two years? Could it start doing more harm than good? No, our position is very clear. If the Royal Commissioner asks for more time, he's got it. Now, in his report, he did point out um, that the existence of the Royal Commission does shake the confidence in the financial system, and that is why he wants to execute his role promptly. But if it takes uh, two and or he's three doing a very years, good job. so be it? But, look, let's not speculate about that. Let's just mm. deal in the reality of today, which is the Royal Commission has said that his report will be down by February. We look forward to receiving it and acting on his recommendations. But if he asks for more time, he has got it. But in the meantime, Bill Shorten, first that he knew thought that he knew better than a Royal Commissioner. Mm. Now he thinks he is the Royal Commissioner himself. Josh Frydenberg, thanks for your time.